In this show, I plan the preparation of the Range Rover for its extreme outback adventure, spend the day in the workshop, and ask the question, are these 45-year-old wheel rooms going to be fit for the task? Today, I am working on the Range Rover. I have already received some of the additional spare parts that I need, and I'm gonna start fitting them now. Most of the work on the Range Rover in preparation for the canning stock route is not gonna be done here uh, because I need a lift and I need a bit of space. I'm also at the tail end of the build of the troop carrier, which is done either at PCS or in this space here. So. This board, some of you might be familiar with, um, this is all the work on the troop carrier, but I'm actually going to make a box here for the Range Rover. These are the most important things that need to be done in order for it to, I am confident, complete the canning stock route without major issues. The gearbox, the cooling. I actually don't know what work we're gonna be doing on the cooling system. Um, the radiator looks reasonable, but I don't know if it is going to cope with low speeds and uh, high engine outputs, which happens in sand. So what I might do is keep the radiator and add electric fans. That old steel fan is very inefficient, and so is the cowling. So it might just need that. The radiator is in fair shape. I do have a radiator that was supplied by Britpart back in Melbourne. Radiator. But I know that this is a higher performance radiator than that. I haven't, while it's old, I can't see corrosion. It might be absolutely fine, but I don't believe the fan and the cowling is. Interior, not cosmetic but I need to get the fan working, which means I need to replace the dashboard because if I remove this dashboard, it will crumble and likely fall to bits. So I have to get a dashboard for that. In fact, in terms of pure time, my time, uh, most of it's gonna be taken up with the interior because one of the challenges on bringing it across from, from Melbourne was well, the lack of decent uh, ventilation. The fan spins but is incredibly loud and it doesn't spin properly and it doesn't actually push air through well at all. I know where it's coming from. I've taken the top of the dashboard off and there's a cylindrical metal thing there. Almost certainly the fan. The window winders they do, this one is okay, this one is acceptable. It's stiff, but it's acceptable. The one on the other side is unacceptable. So anybody sitting in the passenger seat of this vehicle is not going to be easily, easily going to be able to open and close the windows. That's not, that's not fair. And we need to do seats plus belts. There are some safety things as well. Uh, the seats are actually in reasonably good uh, condition. There's a little bit of corrosion and nothing I worry about safety with the seats. But in terms of comfort, these seat belts are pretty awful. Now, I know that when you're on a, on a little narrow track like the Canning, you, you don't actually wear a seat belt. You don't need to wear a seat belt. It's not a, contributing to your safety in any way at all. And because of the constant movement it can actually be quite uncomfortable, especially with inertia reel seat belts like these that don't work properly. They don't retract properly. They pull too hard. They're, they're, they're horrible. So I want to, I don't want whoever is sitting in this driver's seat to take off their seat belt because it's so uncomfortable when you should be wearing a seat belt. And when you're on an open road, of course you must wear a seat belt. So there's no question about that. So I have to do something about this <clears throat> to make it more comfortable. And I have already ordered quite a bit of kit. Some of it has arrived and the other bits and pieces I'm expecting in about four weeks time. Suspension. It's on order. I have ordered um, a Discovery One uh, Old Man Emu uh, gas shocks and springs, which will give me uh, a, a little bit of a lift, probably about an inch. I don't need a lift. Car's got plenty of clearance to do the trip, uh, but the 
the, the Britpart shock absorbers that were fitted uh, certainly have, and they're still fine as they are now, but I don't believe they are high enough quality to be able to withstand the pounding and the corrugations of the canning stock. I think the chances of a shock failure leaving them as they are, are actually quite high. In terms of the engine, you know, it runs really well. It's, it doesn't use excessive fuel. Uh, it, uh, the electrics work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the alternator. I've got a spare. Uh, I might upgrade the air filters. These are not that good. Maybe I'll just take extra spares, be ready to change them. Um, the brakes uh, need a bit of work. Actually, that's something I need to put on the list. I have an oil pressure sender unit that's not working. The temperature one is working. All the gauges are working. Uh, I have a spare. Uh, accelerator cable, spare choke cable, I'm not going to change them. I'm going to do the work on their suspension, uh, I will we'll get to that. There's a bit of detail, an extra little bit of reinforcing that I need to do uh, to the front struts that I'm going to do. But when the vehicle is then on, on the lift, I'll be able to dismantle it because then it'll probably be parked for two months and I'm going to do that after the gearbox is put in. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually have the gearbox put in so I can drive it and test it and make sure it's good and then the vehicle will be parked and I will do all of these other major components then. Battery's good, fan as I said I'm going to replace, um, all the water hoses that were changed recently they're all good, no corrosion, steering was pulled up, steering's good, um, engine is good. I, I, I don't think I'm going to need to do any additional work on the engine at all. When I took the Range Rover up to film the announcement of the canning stock route, um, I drove it on some corrugated roads and you know the amazing thing, it didn't rattle. There were virtually no rattles at all. That amazed me. That, was, that, was, that put a massive smile on my face. And I think I know why. Because I remember on my old one what used to rattle. And I, I already did that work a long time ago. I just did it because I saw the issues and, and I just did it. And so that was a good sign. One of the issues is but the dust coming in the back. There was a, my old one, the dust in the back was really, really bad. And m my rubber seals were reasonable. So I've ordered more rubber seals. These are, this is for the part of the, the, the lower tailgate. I've uh, organized rubbers for the upper tailgate. And look, we'll improve it. It'll never be good. I'm not expecting to be good. But the trouble is now that with the fan, if I close all the windows and doors um, and turn on the fan, the fan doesn't work. But we'll get the fan to work better. But it never works particularly well. If I crack the window, it creates a negative pressure inside the car, which means it sucks dust through the back. But it doesn't just suck, suck, suck dust. It sucks in um, carbon, carbon monoxide and it stinks. It's really, really, the exhaust fu uh, fumes stink. And of course, it's, it's poisonous. So we've got to keep that to an absolute minimum. So that's a very important part. I've really got to... I'm going to recondition the upper and lower tailgate. The mechanism actually works quite well. I replaced these gas struts uh, before I drove it across from Victoria. The uh, seal here, around here, I've already got that seal. I'm going to put that on, but my idea really is to, is to uh, refurbish this. I'm going to remove it completely and refurbish it, clean it up perfectly, give it paint, Clean, take this all off. There's some rust, some nasty rust there and there. <clears throat> I will be cleaning that up. I am not going to take the roof lining off for the trip because um, it'll, it'll be fine. It's not a, it's not a big issue. If I'm, I'd rather, you see, because after I get back from the trip, I'm then going to do the refurbishment and that's part of the refurbishment. So I'm going to leave that as it is. The mechanism for the lower tailgate works very well. But the rubber here, as you can see, is in a bad, bad way. So I have ordered this rubber. Um, and there's a little bit of rust there and there. It's small. It's minor rust. Minor, minor corrosion. And it's actually... 
bit of adjustment needs there and we're good to go. You know, I must say, I'm really enjoying, I've never done this before. I've never built a really old, rebuilt, reconditioned an old vehicle before. I've always built my vehicles and this would be number 18 of them, 18, something like that. I've always been built for purpose, which is a new kind of a new, new, new catchphrase. Uh, but there have been. I'm just I'm saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do with it. This is what I needed to do for me. It's a tool. It's a piece of important equipment for me to be able to do my work and enjoy fantastic travels. This is not like that. While I am getting it ready for an extremely tough, um, it's a big ask of an old vehicle. Massive, actually. And I think I'm now understanding why people... Uh, spend so much uh, uh, mind space physical time building and restoring old cars is that there's it's the fuzz it's the buzz it's the for me fantastic memories i've done almost all of this work before almost all of it 30 plus years ago oh good time to show you what i got myself for christmas check it out um, this was a uh, kind of combo thing. I love Milwaukee tools. No, I'm not sponsored. God, I wish I was sponsored. <laughs> Beautiful tools. Really magical, magical tools. It was delivered mid-December. It's been a long time since I've been able to effectively rationalize my tool fetish to such a degree. And the reason why I did it, you know what we like, guys. You know, you know what it's like. We rationalise everything. And if you don't, you're lucky. I rationalise this because the Range Rover is not going to be here for a lot of its work. Uh, I'm sharing a workshop somewhere else. I don't want to use their tools, and I definitely don't want them to use my tools. So I want to know that the tools are there when I arrive. So I bought a whole set. And it's going to be very important to me that I don't disrupt the work that's going on there. I don't want to, uh, I, I, want, I want to make my visit there as le least impactful as possible. Besides, the home for this after the uh, Range Rover project is, well, a hangar. Yes, we are busy buying an aircraft and on Christmas Day, I will release the video telling you all about it. There you go. How's that for rationalization, eh? Pretty good, eh? <clears throat> I think it's very good. And it's... Yeah. What do we do? Right. <clears throat> I'm actually going to do a little job today. <clears throat> this is quite an easy... And this is not absolutely necessary, but... The water... Yeah, let me... Come this um, little guy here uh, it's got two pumps and it obviously feeds the window washers it leaks and I can only put about half a liter in there so it passed the roadworthy because it works but uh, that'll be empty in no time on a dusty route like the canning so for 40 pounds I bought this guy it's a bottle with twin, because I need it back in front. Those are the pumps, electrical connections, and a bracket. The mounting it. The biggest challenge is going to be to how I mount it. But you know something? This is, the, this is the kind of work I really enjoy doing. It's a kind of pottering work. There's no pressure, you know, uh, to, 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 to get it done. But it's just it's the detail and getting the detail right. And... Um, not sure how I'm going to mount that, but it doesn't worry me at this moment. I'm confident. Uh, yeah, that's a mess down there. I'm confident that I can have a bit of fun and get that working. Uh, it's not an original part. Not at all. No, not original part. bolt holding on the bottom is completely seized. Okay. 
one of the problems with ye oldie Range Rovers this is the fuse box only three fuses run the entire car these two are our spares uh, but because they're in the engine bay they're exposed to corrosion and these of course are just completely hopeless the previous owner though rewired the car and underneath the dashboard behind the glove box are three replacement fuses the wiring is okay that's uh, one of those is front and one of those is back the switch is operational and that's the earth for both of them so wiring I don't have to do anything I'll just neaten that up a little bit uh, now I've got to figure out how to mount it it is supplied with a very rudimentary mounting bracket that seems to have absolutely no purpose at all all right not a problem I'll make my own mount bracket I think what I might do is use this is where the original one was mounted why don't I drill those pop rivets out clean this up a bit make a bracket a new bracket that uses those mounting holes and mount it like that what do you think two river nuts and what I need to do is establish the location I'm going to use those two nuts I'm going to use a uh, pop rivets and mount that like that and then mount the water tank onto it directly like that pop rivets what size do we want to make fairly fairly large with a large washer probably that that's a 4.8 okay that's the bracket done so what do you reckon that's it it's not terribly tidy but I'm not sure where to to put the cables up maybe I should put a little thing up here but I don't know it's fine uh, and it works I'm quite pleased with that I have to have uh, an important question answered can these standard rims handle tubeless tires this is a really important question because um, when I operated my Range Rover 30 years ago I very rarely uh, would very rarely let the tire pressures down the reason being is because when, when you've got a tubed tire and you have a lot of flex and the vehicle is going, for example, on a gravel road where now I would let the tire pressures down on it, make it a bit more comfortable, reduce vibration, no ways would I do that with a tube tire. I would leave them hard, even harder than normal, purely to protect the tire because of the heat buildup between the tube and the, the, the tire itself. It can be so extreme the tube can actually explode inside the tire. I've had it happen to me on more than one occasion at normal pressures on gravel. Canning, I'll be driving day after day after day on thick sand over dunes, there are over a thousand of them. I have to let the tire pressures down, which means if I'm driving with tubes, I will probably have catastrophic tire or inner tube failure, which then causes tire failure. And if the answer is no, you cannot reliably run these tubeless tires with these rims, then I have to find an alternative and find some rims that are suitable. What are you saying about the tubes there? That they're old? They could be the older ones. It's hard to tell, but these ones are running the ferrules on them, which is with the smaller valve, whereas the other ones on, on the spare is running the thicker tube valve on there. So we'll just strip it down and have a look and see what it's like. The shape of the uh, rim, where the bead meets the tire, is it very different to a tubeless? Different shape? It is. I'll show you once we get it off.
It's not great, is it? It's been a lot worse. Mm, yeah, you may have seen a lot oh, worse. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's not too bad. Mm. Okay, the difference between a tube and tubeless rim. So you've got the extra wells here. That's it in there. So that's where the bead of the tyre locks itself into there. As you can see, your tube tyre rim doesn't have that. So it does require a tube. Otherwise, the bead will slip. So you're saying that because of the shape difference of the rims, I can't run a tube tubeless tyre on that rim? It doesn't have the wells, so it'll leak. Bead will slip. Bit of rust build up, so continuous leaking. Whether to, if you wanted to stick with that rim, you'll have that issue. Otherwise, if you want to change the rim to a tubeless, tube type rim, then we can do it that way. So that is why I brought them here to be to be taught this thing. The the, the fact that I'm going to want to lower the pressures means that without that little ridge, the chances of the tire actually coming off the rim and losing all its pressure are very high. So while it might run without tubes at normal pressures, although not particularly reliably, there is no way it is going to be a reliable solution when running at low pressures. So I have to change the rims. So this then is the replacement window winding mechanism. And I think that getting it into the door is actually going to be, uh, I'm anticipating it going to be a bit tricky to do. One of the things that the previous owner did on the vehicle was do this cosmetics, okay, um, but they, I've taken them off and almost every single one of these little plastic clips has broken. Um, so obviously there, you see that's an example. If that had been original, there's no ways they would have broken. But there are, uh, I have to find some replacements because almost all of them snapped when I took that out and I took it out gently. And the owner also replaced or refurbished uh, a lot of the door handles, not all of them, but some of them. And whoever did the work uh, did quite a nice job because the top here is all scuffed and it looks like somebody's covered it with paint but these bottom ones uh, look like they've been even powder coated so um, right uh, okay how do I okay there's screws missing there that should have that should have hmm there's a pin I seem to remember there's a pin there's some kind of pin there you go. It's all coming back to me now. Those are the pins. So now let's compare it. Goes down quite easily. And it starts getting very stiff there. I have oiled it up. I did put a lot of oil and lubricant on it. There's the arm there. But at this point here, that is unbelievably stiff. I mean, that is, I can't actually So, here you go. All right, so, um, hmm. how, um, how I've never done this before. I anticipate that I'm gonna have to, hmm. Maybe I should go on the internet or ask my mate, Jonathan and Richard from Church House, House Classics. They're the guys that are helping me with the spare parts. And they, uh, Jonathan is the owner of Diane, the suffix A that I drove in Wales. And they, they'll be able to help me with a few tips. I need to contact them. Okay, how do you get this out? There you go. Not bad at all. See, they didn't do a bad job. These were remade as well. They didn't do a bad job, uh, apart from the bad quality clips. So this is right. That goes sits like that, which means that I have to uh, wind the window up, put a piece of wood in there to support it, and hold the 
window high, higher than, higher than that, okay, then slip this under, uh, assuming this drops out reasonably easily, uh, there's a bulkhead, there's a piece of steel that runs through the center of the door from here to about here, okay, might not be as easy as I think, because the door is not hollow. Uh, but anyway, I think if I just start dismantling it, I'll see how it goes. All right, here I am about uh, four hours later, and um, I discovered, well, <laughs> I've discovered that it's an unbelievably difficult to get to work on this flipping door. Really difficult. I mean, just, just, I'm getting nowhere. But I've discovered this. There is nothing wrong with the window winder. There is nothing wrong with it. It's smooth, it's easy, it's something else. This window should drop on its own. It starts reasonably easy, but then it gets stuck. And then down the bottom here, I'm actually having to push. That's the problem. It's getting stuck in the middle, which suggests to me that this area here, uh, this piece here of the runner down the middle of the door, is the problem so i have gone out and i bought myself some silicone spray this is a dry silicone lubricant and i need a cloth sprayed almost everywhere I can get to. This side up here, really, really difficult. Let's see if it's made any difference at all. Definitely made a difference, no question. Made a big difference actually. It's still sticking, but it's not sticking badly. That's made a huge difference. Massive difference, actually. It's still getting stick stuck. Whoop. Okay, that might be sufficient. All right, let's try it. Oh, wow. That's much easier. But that's a problem. It won't go any further up than that. All right, I think I've managed to do it. I actually don't know how I did it, but I, I think I've got managed to do it. So it's slightly stiff on the way down, which is not a bad thing. And then it still gets stuck about there. There's a It's actually fine, you know, before you you saw how difficult it was. And now that's actually, um, it's, it's actually fine, good enough. All right, that was a bit of a ball ache to get it all out and back in again. But anyway, I think on the other side, I will just uh, strip down the door and actually not dismantle it at all. Just make sure they give it a really good lubricant. Because all of the previous lubrication I had done on it, which did help a little bit, but not really enough, was just the moving parts, the obvious moving parts, but not the runners left and right of the moving window. Oh well, learn something every time you do a project.